Hi guys, this is Sean from UDJ. Uh, we're back with part two on how to upgrade um, a Chave Slim Par 64 RGBA to a permanent wireless solution. This is our own our solution for this. Uh, it, this will void your warranty. If you have not watched part one, please click the link below and we'll show you what we've done so far to this point. So let's get started. I wanted to show you that we have the unit already open, ready to go. In our first video, part one, we showed you how to open it. Uh, six screws here on the outside to take the lens off. And then we have four screws to take the LED board uh, uh, loose. So again, uh, this will void your warranty. Make sure that you know that uh, you, know, you are taking responsibility and ownership of your fixture if you decide to do this. Uh, so we have our... USB inverter. So again, this was a USB inverter that we have 12 volts that we need to come in and we have a uh, Some pins here that we need to solder for the USB uh, For the wireless DMX board uh, that that uh, we'll, we'll have uh, again knowing that the USB uh, Pin outs are going to be number one. This is that first bubble here to the far left is going to be our hot. That's going to be our hot. Give us five volts. Uh, two and three are data. Car USB uh, most likely just for charging. Does not need any kind of data communication. So uh, void uh, for now. Uh, that we are concerned about our ground. We can ground it to our uh, ground that we have already soldered on here. Or ground it right right to the uh, far right, which is our ground here. So what we're going to do is take this unit and our inverter board, a USB inverter board, and we're gonna solder though, we're gonna splice right into here, we're not gonna cut, we're gonna splice right into our hot and our ground, right into the back of the in the power the power board uh, inverted, which is 12 volts right here, and we're gonna splice it right in here. So as soon as we get, uh, I get that done, I will show you the next step. Okay, now that we have the uh, fixture open, what I did here, I actually, I soldered the USB inverter, the hot wire, that's our red wire, right to the red side of the uh, Slimpar uh, power supply on the outlet side. So again, these are very, very uh, thin wires. All I did, I used a um, razor blade to carefully cut the jacket back to explode, expose uh, the wire. So I had to twist a little bit to get around there. So as you see in the video here, uh, I did a little close up. You'll see that um, jacket is cut back nice, nice enough for me. And then what we did is uh, solder it to make a nice good connection. Now we're gonna basically use some tape to put around there to make sure everything's nice and sealed. So let's continue on and we'll show you some more. Now that we have everything all wired up, I wanted to show you what we have. We have our wire, our USB inverter. There's the inverter there, if you can see that. And then this is our cable we did, uh, me, excuse me. Uh, this is our cable that we did, uh, the hot. Again, this is uh, spliced. Uh, then we use solder to solder it in. And we have to use uh, electrical tape to securely get it in there. Uh, we did the same thing on the, on the black wire, which is the ground. And so now we know that we have 12 volts there. So give me a second and I will show you that we have power to this unit. We have everything now wired up. You can see that we have it powered up as well. We actually have um, a red light on our USB inverter board. So that red light tells me that we successfully connected the 12 volts out of the power supply of the Chave Slim Par going up and converting it down to 12 to 5 volts that we need. So again, we're going to use this to connect our 5 volts and our ground here to our DNX boards. So let's do that next. Okay, guys, um, I 
got everything off, and what we're getting ready to do here is install uh, some shrink wrap on the wire on the USB inverter board. Uh, just a few little few pieces. This one's a little bigger than normal. I did go out and get some extra hands uh, with a little microfine glass on it. Um, had to go pick one up. Uh, it does make my job a little easier. Uh, so I have that. Only I didn't get is a shrink shrink wrap. So what we're gonna do here is open up the uh, DMX wireless boards uh, and see the contents of that. There's our board, 512 board, and there's the back. It comes with some wires. Uh, the red wire is for our hot, and the yellow wire is for our ground and our black and white are for our DMX uh, plus and negative. Got an antenna there and antenna cable. So what I'm going to do now is uh, grab wire and we're going to solder that to the uh, far number one position of the USB 5 volts. Uh, so there's a little pin on there. Um, and what I do is put a little solder on that pin to build it up just a little bit. We want to be careful not to uh, get solder on any other part of the uh, board because uh, it is a little tight spot right there. So a uh, little, little bit's needed. Once that's done, uh, I'll grab the wire and put some solder on that. So let me get everything in position here. The third hands definitely come in in uh, in handy. They're very handy, and that microfine in a glass uh, definitely helps out uh, for those of us that uh, wear glasses. Uh, there's nothing wrong with a microfine glass. A little steady hands here, and we'll we're going to get it in there. Not be for the hot. There we go. That's all nice and snug. Now we'll get the yellow wire for the ground and we'll work on that. That seems to go on a little easier because it's sitting right next to the uh, larger ground uh, wire, but there's another one there. You can, another one there that you can wire it to as well. Uh, you can use either or because it all, all is part of the same circuit. So I actually just wire it right to that little part instead of messing with any other stuff that I have uh, soldered. So again, uh, pins uh, number one is going to be your hot, and then uh, the last last number four is going to be your ground. So we're all done there. There, There's a good little picture of it, how I have it wired up. So what I'm going to do is just kind of angle the wires uh, in here, and so I can put a little tape on there and make sure they don't get pulled on or yanked on, and kind of keep it kind of keep all my wires consistent coming out of one side again you don't have to do this this is something extra that I that I've done uh, just to make sure that you know I don't have to open the box up again or have have problems with uh, a wire uh, shorting out or anything like, like that so now I'm going to plug the uh, power uh, the Molex into the back of the uh, DMX cable or the DMX uh, board and we're just going to check and see if we have uh, how, have power uh, to that board. So we definitely have power. I'm going to turn the power on right now to check and see if we have five volts before I actually plug that in. Um, wanna, definitely want to make sure that that's happening. So we got a red light. There it is. So we know we have, and we'll turn everything on. That works. By the way, I have Shave Show Express uh, running too as well, uh, just so I can uh, you know, get communication uh, to the unit to test and make sure I can change channels no problem. So here we go. Let's power the board up. Success. We have power. I'm going to change the channel uh, to the channel that I need. And I, I have a blue one and we should be blinking green. So perfect. So I'm just going to shrink wrap uh, this unit here, and again, I don't have a um, a, a blower, a heat heat gun. Um, you know, I could could have probably spent the twenty eight dollars, but uh, uh, but I'll probably never use it again uh, after this uh, project. Uh, never know, I might, but 
I don't do too much shrink shrink wrapping, and uh, this light lighter uh, works pretty good for me. As long as you get the blue flame in there, uh, this uh, shrink wrap was a little larger than uh, than I thought. Uh, it does shrink 50 percent. Uh, so I just work my, my way around it and get it shrunk up as much as possible just so I can make sure that nothing touches inside of there because I'm going to put the uh, hot glue um, around it once I get it all inside the unit. I tied it all up here. There we go, all done. Put a little tape in the front just to make sure that any uh, in, anything exposed uh, is covered in case uh, you know something come jars loose it won't touch anything in the board. So let's go ahead and position this thing inside the slim par. It uh, goes perfectly uh, in this in the one of the corners. Uh, make sure you get up get it up under the uh, wire for the uh, LED board so you won't have anything because you you need to have more room. Uh, in there to be, bring the L LED board uh, back in its place, and you don't want the wires, uh, so make sure you go up, uh, go up under it. Again, like I said, the uh, wireless PCB board it fits perfectly uh, in between the two um, corners where the screws uh, for the lid tie together. So that's the right there with the particular uh, wireless DMX boards. I got these boards on, on eBay for uh, uh, $11.50 something cents uh, each uh, came from China. So it fits like, again, it fits perfect right here. Um, then we have to drill a couple of holes. I typically uh, mark it, have a template. There's our DMX cables. And we're gonna wire those uh, right to the back of the uh, PCB board for the DMX uh, input. So let's run a quick uh, test here real quick before we start gluing and gluing, gluing things together. But I have noticed uh, uh, some of the fixtures that I've done, uh, the wires on the, DM, on the DMX size, side wasn't, were not consistent. At least that's what I found. So I, I typically plug it in, turn it on, um, get a preset going, uh, make sure that uh, I know that color is gonna be red or whatever. And I use my, uh, take my wires, and put it on the appropriate uh, uh, pin outs to make sure that uh, it works. So right now, I'm, I'm testing right now. So I'm gonna power everything up again. Got everything in position, make sure, make sure nothing's touching. I grab the DMX uh, wires. And I start uh, seeing where which one they go to. So I think I have it on a little chase here, uh, four color chase. So I actually found uh, the pin out, so I know where I'm going to solder it, and I know everything's working properly. So again, on the back of the uh, DMX board um, for the fixture. Uh, there's a big bubble, couple about three big bubbles on the output side. Um, those that solder is a little little tough. You have to heat it up just a little bit to make sure you get your your new solder on top of that as well. So what I do, I just heat it up a little bit, uh, add some solder on top, and then uh, get my um, uh, uh, wireless DMX uh, uh, red or excuse me, black and white wire lined up perfectly on there. Doesn't take a whole lot, just get it on there. Uh, because those wires are really, really thin uh, and really short. So you don't have to do any kind of cutting or splicing on those DMX wires. It can be a little troublesome sometimes when that, uh, if you didn't heat up the existing uh, solder. So definitely want to be careful. Because the wire, the wire will not stay sometimes. So uh, this took me a little longer than I expected on this one. So that should be on there. And we'll go ahead and grab the white one and get that on there. And again, the white wire is uh, our do is the uh, positive for the DMX, and the black is the ground. So definitely keep that in mind when you're looking uh, when you're doing this. So here's a picture of it. I'm gonna put one a picture up there. You can see that up close. 
Okay, so now it's time to um, run another check. We always check again. Plug it up. And do a full a full uh, check, so we can see there our we're, we're running. Uh, we're going. To, I'm gonna go to Shabby Show Express, do a couple changes, make sure everything is uh, working correctly. Uh, use some of the built-in uh, sound activation modes, uh, different color channels that I have, uh, so it's responding perfectly, and uh, I know uh, that we're ready to to hot glue everything and get everything drilled. few more color changes okay all looks good got a green light green light uh, flashing means that we have a uh, communication with the wireless uh, transmitter so I'm gonna sit that right in between the uh, two notches there and I'm gonna give me a little mark so I kind of I know where the uh, LED bubble is um, on the DM wireless DMX board because there's a little rib inside of there. And we want to make sure that uh, that wireless DMX board uh, is below the LED uh, the the 10 millimeter LED board. Uh, so you don't want to make sure that's down low enough, but not too not too low where it's hitting the bottom. I'll we'll get our drill here, and we're gonna drill. Uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna drill the LED uh, out and the button out for the uh, wireless DMS board. Uh, what I, which I recommend that you do is uh, put tape on your drill bit. Um, that will prevent uh, the drill uh, once it exit, exits. Uh, it won't go all the way through the uh, and hit any kind of damage anything inside. So there's our one hole. And then about a quarter of an inch bit is going to be uh, where our button goes to change the channel for the DMX board. So we're going to be careful and drill about a quarter of an inch right below the other hole. So now we have two holes there. And then I'm going to change bits uh, and we're going to... So now I'm going to take this unit and put it right, uh, right in there. It should pop right in there, and the LED light should pop right out, and I should have room to uh, in there to push the button with a screwdriver or a little small pin and push the button to change the channel. So we'll fit that in there nicely. There it is. Make sure everything's lined up. I can use a little screwdriver push the button to change the uh, DMX channel so now I'm going to change my bit and then we're going to get over to the um, antenna the antenna takes just a little larger uh, bit I don't have the sizes just yet I'll probably post them a little later uh, in my video or down below of what the sizes of, of the drill bits are but uh, you could pretty much uh, you know eyeball it and get, and get the proper bit that you need So on the antenna, there is a um, a nut, uh, a flat, um, a lock washer, and then there's another washer there uh, that has a little, um, uh, I guess a little little pins to basically lock on the back of the plastic. So again, I've already drilled that out, um, and we're going to put that inside, and make sure when it goes in, make sure you have the uh, the antenna, the little washer. And then the lock washer and then the nut. So they're all going to go there together and we're going to tighten it up. Takes a little bit to get it, get it, get it tight. You want to make, make sure it's tight. Uh, if you don't get it tight uh, in there, um, you know, as you move, move, move the antenna on the, put the antenna on, it can basically move around and you don't have to have to open the unit back up. So make sure this is nice and tight and be careful not to damage anything inside. So there's our antenna on there. 
we're going to actually put the antenna, actual antenna on there. And we're all set there. Now we, we just now we're going to line everything up and get ready to hot glue. One more test before we uh, put everything together. I got signal. I got lights. Running a couple of programs there on Chavez Show Express. To make sure that we have we're communicating. Kind of changing colors, RGB, different colors, uh, different snap modes, etc. Just to make sure everything is uh, working correctly, dimming, etc. I'm satisfied. There, my thumbs up on that one. Okay, this one's this. Year. We'll unplug it. Now we'll get ready to start uh, uh, hot gluing everything in there. So again, I take the the USB. Uh, the, the USB inverter that's sitting down just in the back of the back of the board in, in the corner in between the DMX board and the uh, antenna so make sure everything's lined up correctly where you want it and just grab some hot glue drop it off in each corner also put some on the antenna as well each corner of the DMX board. Let that uh, try to keep all the drippings down. So once that once that uh, dries, uh, hardens, uh, that won't go anywhere. So now it's time to put it together. Oh, but but let me let me tell you. I also have found this too. Uh, right there where the where we put the DMX board there. Um, sometimes uh, you know I've noticed if you look straight down uh, into the fixture, the lens. Once everything put together, what I notice, what I need to do is actually put a piece of uh, electrical tape on the corner or the top part of the DMX board where that light's at, because uh, it can, it can kind of be annoying if you're looking right at the light, nothing's on, and you see this this flashing uh, green light. Uh, so I want to cover that up with some tape, maybe put a little hot glue there to keep uh, keep the tape from uh, coming off of there. That way, you know, you won't, I mean, as you look down into the uh, fixture when everything's put together, you won't see this uh, green light or green light flashing at you. You'll definitely see it on the outside, but you uh, but you won't see it on the inside. Of the okay, we'll speed it on up and get this thing uh, all closed up and show you uh, the final result. Okay guys, we have a completed project here. Uh, this is my uh, Chave Slim Par RGBA 64. Uh, now it has built-in wireless, so I don't have to worry about uh, running DMX cables. Uh, there's the antenna, nice and sturdy in there. I can fold it down if I like. I can move it wherever I, I want to, how I want. Uh, right in here is the LED for the channels selection. Uh, tell me the colors. That the colors of the channel and then here would be uh, where I hit the button to change whatever channel I want. Sits up really nicely. You can see I can put it on a truss no problem with the clamp. The antenna is out of the way. On the back side here uh, if I have it on the truss uh, any kind of way of sitting like this. Antenna is out of the way. I can get my display here 
uh, IEC in and out, IEC uh, in and uh, regular out. I don't have to worry about any kind of DMX cables here because the uh, wireless PCB board is wired to the back of uh, the end of this part right here. So this project uh, for this each unit cost me thirteen dollars and fifty eight cents, uh, uh, a, a dollar about a dollar something for the uh, a dollar for the USB inverter. Uh, that's the regular inverter that we took uh, where we opened up and got the inverter out and wired it up and then that's for the power for the f for the uh, in uh, for the DMX board and then after then the DMX board was about eleven dollars and some and fifty something cents and it did come from China um, it took about a week uh, to get here so it, the, the, the person I got it from ships very very fast so I'm happy with them. Uh, I've only had one unit that was bad, so I, you know, I'm glad I ordered an extra one. So everything turned out really well, and I'm very happy. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, check if you haven't seen part one, please click the link below to get to part one, and you can see how we started. Thanks for watching.